This video was sponsored by PCBWay. In my last video, I designed and fired a simple rocket engine to get more familiar with propulsion systems. That engine was really a warm up for this project which has been on my list for years. So in this video, I will show you how I made the combustion chamber for my new liquid rocket engine. As with anything else, before you build the rocket engine, you have to create a design that makes sense. I wanted to make this engine as simple as possible, so it would fit within my budget. Big aerospace companies develop very complex turbo machinery to power their engines. In other words, they develop a tiny jet engine that fits the rocket engine high pressure fuel. As you could imagine, I would probably need to sell my house too for developing such a system. Luckily there's a cheaper way. You can also pressurize your propellant tanks and have that pressure feed the propellant into the engine. Of course this process wastes some of the pressure because it has to be turned into velocity to move the propellant into the engine. This configuration is called a pressure fed engine and it's used for simple sounding rockets that don't need to reach over. I picked this type of system because it takes advantage of the extra performance gained by a liquid system while being cheap enough that I can afford one. Next, we need to talk about why I'm going to keep the engine from melting. There are four main ways to cool a rocket engine. Regenerative cooling, where you float the propellant through the engine walls before you burn it. Film cooling, where you burn a richer mixture next to the wall of your engine to keep it cool. Radiative cooling, where you make the engine combustion chamber out of a special material and that glows the heat away. Or heat sink cooling, where you do nothing about it. Bruh. Again, to keep things cheap, I picked heatsink cooling. You might say that that's a very bad, bad idea, but it's really not that bad. This engine was designed to burn 70% ethanol and liquid oxygen, a mixture that doesn't burn that hot. Also, to keep things relatively legal, this engine will only burn for about 2.5 seconds. This makes heatsink cooling suitable for my engine. Given that I wanted a mass flow rate of 120 grams per second, I was able to calculate that the engine would have to be made out of 2 kilograms of steel. Next I used my nozzle calculator program to get the basic dimensions of the engine and after double checking the results with RPA, I got into Fusion 360 and designed the parts. Now that I had the CAD parts done, I was able to make the technical drawings and send the files over to PCBWay, today's sponsor. PCBWay is a Chinese manufacturing company that not only makes PCBs, but also offers CNC machining, 3D printing and sheet metal services. Their build quality is amazing. This is a gas turbine they made for me some time back, and this is a metal 3D printed case. Also, their prices are super low, especially for CNC machining. Make sure to visit their website using the link below. Thanks to PCBWA for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back on track. The parts arrived in two weeks, however I had some trouble getting the package across the border, because it turns out that rocket engines aren't quite allowed to be shipped like this, because of a small thing called ITAR. Fortunately, after a delay of a month, I had the rocket engine in my hands. It was at this point in the project that I thought of comparing the engine to the solid engine I made in the last video. Since then, I did a few more test fires to get an average thrust level, ISP and total impulse. On average, the burn time was about 1 second and the max thrust was around 70 newtons. This means that the average thrust was around 55 newtons. Knowing that the engine holds about 54 grams of propellant, I was able to calculate that the total impulse uh, would be about 50 newton seconds and the ISP to be 110 seconds. Compare this to the liquid engine and things get a lot less exciting. 
This engine will have a max thrust 3 times greater than the solid engine, while being about 10 times heavier. Fortunately, this big thrust level will at least allow for a bigger rocket. Moving on, next I had to weld two parts of the engine together. This weld had to be quite strong as it will be exposed to thermal shock and high pressure during operation. Also, it has to be gas tight. Fortunately, I just started building a go-kart at the time, so I had the opportunity to practice welding before even touching the engine. At the start, the practice welds were really bad. As I welded more and more, however, the weld started to look promising. I still had doubts about them being gas tight, however, so I got the welds made at a weld shop. The two parts that had to be welded together were the combustion chamber and the injector adapter. The injector adapter is a really low tolerance part and welding it could destroy it. This is why if I were to weld it, I would have heated the parts up evenly until I got to about 500 celsius and then welded them. This would reduce the thermal shock because the temperature difference is smaller between the starting temperature and the welding temperature. The guys at the weld shop didn't do this step however and I got kind of worried that the injector will be quite messed up after welding. Fortunately since the adapter is a huge chunk of metal, it didn't really deform at all and the weld actually turned out very great. So after the parts got welded, I thought it would be a great idea to nickel plate them including the nozzle. Nickel plating is a way of applying a really resistant layer of nickel onto a part using electrolysis. This is great because nickel is a very corrosion resistant metal and corrosion resistance is always good for a project like this. The first thing that I had to do to nickel plate the engine was make some electrolyte. The process involved mixing white vinegar with a bit of salt and sticking two nickel electrodes into the solution. After about 3 hours, the stuff turned green. I first dipped in the nozzle and saw bubbles forming on the surface. After about 5 minutes, I took the nozzle out of the solution and proceeded to electroplate the combustion chamber next. I didn't have quite enough solution to cover the whole chamber, so I quickly made a toroidal container out of two tubes and a 3D printed part. At this point, I took a closer look at the nozzle and the plated layer didn't, didn't really look like nickel, but more like rust. After this I quickly took out the combustion chamber out of the electrolyte and cleaned the parts as well as I could. Lastly, I assembled the engine and by assemble I mean screwed the nozzle into the combustion chamber. And that's about it for this video. As usual, I'd like to give you some project updates in these last minutes. A few months ago, I made a model rocket for the solid engine from the last video, so the next video will probably be about that. As for this project, I will do a lot more research on injector design before I make the final thing, so the next liquid engine video will probably be about 3D printed injector models. Also, I just recently started a new project which will be huge, even bigger than this one. It involves this thing here, but that's about all I can show you. If you would like to support me financially, you could buy something from my online shop. Every dollar is a step forward to a new project. Also, let me know if you would be interested in a Patreon channel. I am thinking of making one. Okay, that's about it. Thanks again to PCBWA for sponsoring this video. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one, bye.